a victory reminder. Today you have millions of Muslims, millions of Muslims, and I know we have a very international audience here, and I don't want anyone to feel offended. Please don't, because I am... I do not believe in, in, in nationality, meaning that nationality comes first. I'm not that kind of uh, 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 Islamic personality who, begin, who believe about Trini and Bangladeshi and Pakistan. To me, everybody is one Ummah. But that's what I have learned in Islam. And I don't categorize people by Pakistani and Bangladeshi and, oh, if you're Bangladeshi, then I'm your friend. Or if you're Pakistani, then I'm your friend. Or if you're Trini, then I'm your friend or your guy. And that doesn't have anything to do with me. That's why my whole lifestyle has been different in my marriage life in my children's life. I don't care whether you're Bangladeshi, you're Pakistani, you're Indian, you're Guyanese, you're Chinese. It doesn't make a difference to me. Wallahi, I'm not only saying that by mouth, but you look at my life, that's what I've done. Very international in the geographical settings. I don't let pray Salah five times a day and say, when it comes to life, boy, I'm first a Bengali, and you know, I remember that. First Pakistani, you forget Islam now. That's a detrimental dunya that is a disease in our hearts. Oh, I'm first Pakistani, oh, I'm first African, I'm first Chinese, I'm first American, I'm first this. Yes, you got a nationality by a passport, but when it comes to Iman, Allah says this, Ummah is one brotherhood. Okay? And that's a disease I see in America. And people f f go like that. You have an Arab Imam, so every Arab go there. You have a Pakistani Imam, so Pakistani go there. Bangladeshi, my Bangladeshi go there. It doesn't matter about speaking the language. It's all about the culture. And I was Allah. Allah forgive me. All the Muslim millions of Muslims over the world, and I was going to mention the point Brother Fahad made last night. Everybody's praying, Oh Allah, Chechnya, Pakistan, Syria, Palestine. Allah not answering the dua. Is something wrong? Nothing is happening, eh? It's getting even worse. But Allah is saying something else here. For in the Qareeb, I am close to you. So Allah is there in these Muslim countries where these problems are happening. And Allah is also saying, And I answer your call when you call on me. So when the people call these millions of Muslims every khutbah all over the world, you hear Chechnya and Palestine and Syria. And I... So it means Allah is not answering the call. This verse Allah is saying that he answers the call when we call on him. So anyone to disbelieve that means we become a disbeliever. So Allah is answering us. The only thing is hear what Allah says next. Very interesting. Subhanallah. He says, I answer your call when you call on me. But let them know, he's telling the Prophet, وسلم, that they must answer my call when I call on them. You see the hit punchline? You see, we all asking Allah, power in this country, power in that country, power here, power there. Like if we all a bunch of Baptists getting power. Everybody wants power in the Muslim country. But Allah is saying, do you answer my call when I call on you Muslims? When I ask you Muslims to go in da'wah, when I ask you Muslims to spend in the part of Allah, when I ask you Muslims to stay away from evil, when I ask you Muslims to stay away from culture, when I ask you Muslims to do what is right and stay away from what is evil, when I ask you to spend in the part of Allah, do you do that? Do you answer my call? Ah, that's why you see all these problems all around us. It's not that Allah is not answering our dua. Let me complete this tafsir in the line, inshallah, in two seconds. Yes, Allah has answered the, the, dua, the call because he has said it. But it's like the Quran. You know the Quran was in Lawhi Mahfuz? This whole Quran was in Lawhi Mahfuz. It's there. The duas are answered. The duas were promised by Allah. It's answered. They were answered. They will be answered. But Allah is just waiting for the time to reveal the answers unto us. Doors being answered is one thing. The answer being revealed unto us is another thing. We seeing the answer is another thing. It's, it's a difficult, that's a whole different world. Allah, in some cases, is waiting to see if we will answer his call in staying away from evil 
and doing the nine yards that he wants us to do. And when the people do what Allah wants them to do, as it says, he will not change a people until they try to change the condition for themselves. We need to do the right thing to taqwa the piety and we will see the answers, the solution to our problem. But it's not that it's not answered. Allah is not saying, if you don't do this, I wouldn't do that. Allah is merciful. He's different. Human beings do that. If you don't do this to me, I won't give you that. That's not the case with Allah. Allah has promised, I have already answered your du'as. But you see, the revealing is a whole different thing. Now he will send it down. When we get that spiritual vision, we in the part of Allah and our devotion, we will hear what Allah wants us to hear. We will see what Allah wants us to see and we will get and see the answers clear in front of us. But when we are all surrounded by the dunya and the influence of Satan and power and wealth and desire of this dunya, we won't have the visibility to see what Allah has already accepted for us. It's a hard thing, brothers and sisters. It takes a whole different phenomena, philosophy, and, di and thinking to go into that different category, inshallah. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. And as we come into this new month of Ramadan, let it not be a month that is only designed to stay away from food and drink. Woe unto that person, says the Prophet sallallahu unto whom Ramadan comes and does not seek the mercy and forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us let this Ramadan be a month of forgiveness and mercy and opportunity, emancipation from hell to save us from Jahannam, inshallah. And that can only come when we do the right thing, make the intention to do the right thing, and inshallah, we will see it fruitful, inshallah. Ya Allah, ya Rahim, ya Rahim. Alhamdulillahi